Afre Mogesin, and welcome to the One Micronesia podcast, another episode rolling out. Uh, I'm excited about this one because I get to sit down and chit chat with somebody who, when you talk about uh, people who wear so many hats, I think this lady has wears way too much hats, but she does it in in a way that um, that helps out, especially our FSM or, or COFA or FAS citizens out uh, in uh, Hawaii. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to welcome to the podcast here somebody who is a member of the uh, Hawaii Board of Education, also a, the Pacific Islander Liaison for the City and County of Honolulu, a member of the FSM COVID-19 Task Force USA, and the president of the Koshrai Women's Association. Ladies and gentlemen, help me in welcoming to the podcast, Ashanti Sigra Asher. Welcome to the pa- podcast. Thank you so much. Aloha from Oahu. And like we all say it in Kushrai and Pompeii, Lenwo and Kasilele. Thank you for having me. And then, you know, uh, Shanti, I want to start off the podcast here, the first part of it, uh, by getting to know you and getting to know, um, you know, where it all start for you. So let's start there. Let's start by getting to know um, you. When did you first leave home? That was in August 1999. You know, those are that that was a, an unforgettable month because that's when you get to leave everything that you knew behind and start a life that you you I, I don't think anyone will be prepared for it, to be honest, um, but a lot of uncertainties, a lot of fear. But when I waved goodbye to my families. While I was on the tarmac in Kushrai, it was, um, I think that moment you realize that you're going to be alone, but you knew as an Islander that you were raised, you were grounded with so much values and principles, and that you always believe that nothing is impossible with God, that was really the reassurance that I brought with me when I left August 1999. You you left home uh, <laughs> and you pursued something. Uh, you pursued a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at the message that you sent me. Uh, I'm trying to see here. Da, 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 da. You pursued a whole lot. I mean, we're talking about bachelors, done. Masters, done. And then recently, you're, uh, is, is it called a, a Juris Doctor? Is that what it's called? Yep. Wow. That's, that's a lot. That's pretty much uh, taking up your whole life. But you, you did it with just like nothing. You had, you had a goal and you, you, you pursued it. You know, uh, can I just say, um, I, I just wanted to um, say that while these were accomplishments that were associated to my name, I didn't come this far alone. I, so uh, about myself, I have, um, I have three daughters. My husband is from Kushrai and I'm the oldest of seven, one brother and five sisters. I came from a very close knit family and from a very small state. So um, this journey while I traveled alone, spiritually, and with a very, very awesome support system, I, I could not have made it this far. So um, it, it was true that there were a lot of achievements, but the credit, this is like a us <laughs> accomplishment. And I, I think that's one thing that I just wanted to highlight, that uh, as an Islander, we didn't come far because we did it alone. It's because we did it together. And, and I just wanted to highlight that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, it's true. You know, it, I think one of the, the main things in our culture is family. And, you know, from time to time, we, we might venture off. But eventually, we will always need family to, to keep us grounded. You know, you talk the things that you've been through, you know, all the years that you've spent in Hawaii through, ed, through school and work. And I don't work. You have to work maybe maybe many jobs just to, to get through school. 
So and I think I think family was 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 always that thing that's always there to to keep you grounded and focused and inspired. I think that's the beautiful thing about us islanders is we always keep family at uh on speed dial if anything. <laughs> So, you know, Shanti, we talk about that and we talk about your accomplishments and um, the many hats that you wear. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the many hats that you do wear and let's talk about uh, which which came first and, and how did it all start? Well, the first hat, the most challenging one was becoming a mother. Um, and, you know, as many of us are celebrating International Women's Day, um, I wanted to really highlight that because that journey, that new stepping stone was really the first thing that took me from thinking I was responsible to I have to be responsible because I'm actually raising a child that I want to one day make proud. And so uh, that was, I, for me, as a daughter of Koshrai and Panpei, and then becoming a mother to a daughter who will carry the same legacy. I, I took that as a really, really uh, rewarding. It's also a challenging, but very rewarding responsibility. And I think that was the first time I remember making that commitment that if my child grows up, I want to make her proud of what I do so that she can take that baton and do the same thing. And, you know, like we talked about family and that was really it. Uh, you once took those steps so you can make your family, your state, your village, your school, you name it. This is what an Islander do. We, we try to represent. And then um, that first hat I was wearing, uh, no one will ever be ready for it, no matter how many training, no matter how many talks you had with your mom, your grandma, your friends, it's just that very life-changing experience. And that was the first hat I wore and learned to take responsibility to the next level. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get to know uh, Shanti and get to know what she is doing in um, out in Hawaii, Honolulu, uh, especially for COFA and FAS citizens. So stick around. We'll be back with that. Hafadei, Mogathin, and Lengwo, and Castellelier, and uh, welcome back to the uh, One Micronesia podcast, where I'm sitting down with the one and only uh, Shanti Sigra Asher, who lives out in Hawaii, uh, a, a woman with so much hats, who wears so much hats, a member of the Hawaii Board of Education, a Pacific Islander liaison to the city and county of Honolulu, the member of the FSM COVID-19 Task Force USA, and the president of the Kashrayan Women's Association. Uh, so we're back here with uh, Shanti. And Shanti, before we get to the different work that you, you, you do there in Hawaii for our citizens, let's talk about um, some challenges that, that, that you encountered along the way out there in Hawaii. Well, uh, I don't know where to start. But I'll have to say that, you know, coming from a very small island, there are always those moments where you ask yourself whether you can do it, whether you have the ability or the capacity to do something. And, you know, uh, I am a product of a public high school, public school, I would say, because I graduated from LM Elementary and then moved on to Kotrai High School and then I came to college. So challenges at the beginning of my journey were exactly that. They were challenges. But then, you know, we go through life and we become stronger and we learn a lot. And eventually they became opportunities. And I, I think the more we go through life, we will become uh, that will you those experiences enable you to kind of change how you see things because you have to. And so um, seeing these as opportunities to learn, grow, become stronger. Um, they really do make it possible for me to be amongst communities and wear the hats that we are about to talk about. So, so uh, let's talk about some of those amazing programs that you help uh, put together or, or are you working on at the moment? Yeah, um, I'll try to, you know, get through them quickly. There, there were numerous um, opportunities to help our communities. And, you know, from this, because I returned to Hawaii in uh, 2018, and then um, 
Prell, all thanks to Prell. They got me here to help, you know, go around schools and speak to Micronesian students, not only the students, but parents and also teachers. Um, that was really the beginning of my journey working grassroots and working um, at a more direct service opportunity. And then um, during that time, we faced the, some of the modification that were done on the Real ID Act kind of affected a lot of our people. So we took that on with a lot of great people wanting to partner up locals and also Micronesians. We helped, um, you know, fill out paperwork for many Micronesians with the employment authorization. And then uh, that kind of enabled a lot of them to be able to get a driver's license or an, a state ID. And then later on, it was modified for a favorable result for many of us. But then, the co you know, all of this happened uh, with some of the schools that, um, you know, Prell sponsored me and had me go and speak to. It was really to to share my story as a Micronesian, as a Micronesian child that, that graduated back home and Luckily, I was blessed to get to where I'm at. And that, that story I felt was so empowering to many of the students because really these kids, they grew up in an environment that kind of forced them to question their identity or being sh ashamed of who they are. And it was not okay with me. So I took that on and I was too, so serious. I partnered with a lot of people and those are some of the programs to work on culturally responsive um, curriculum with the schools and just being there for the kids because they do need someone that they can look up to, someone who they can relate to and actually believe that they can become somebody because I understood what they were going through and they were raised in very similar, um, you know, same upbringing. So uh, fast forwarding COVID happened and um, the biggest challenge that uh, COVID brought were a lot of our hospitality industry got shut down and many of our citizens work in those, in those um, restaurants and they had to file for unemployment. And as we understood, many of our people are not very uh, comfortable using technology to do a lot of this stuff. And it is complex. I tried to do my husband's unemployment and I was so confused. And that made me question, what about everyone else? So we had to unite efforts with other Micronesians to try and advocate and also make ourselves available to help these people file for their unemployment. So that was one program or one um, effort and advocacy that we did. And uh, during that time was, you know, when the, when the city and county needed some help. And I really thought that there, while COVID brought many heartbreak uh, and um, struggle to many Pacific Islander families, it also had many silver linings. It kind of made the state and the city took a step back to think about how we, are really, really important asset in this discussion because we, yeah, yes, it is true. Our Pacific Islander community got hit hard. Why? It's because there were a lot of miscommunication, misunderstanding and lack of trust from government to our community members. So when I took on, uh, I was so fortunate to become that liaison and Many of the programs that were offered, you know, it starts from isolation and quarantine. What do you do if you start coughing and you're not sure? What is the number to call? There is no centralized, you know, information gathering or hub. So that became building and improving that communication with commu community and government was really key in this, uh, in my position. So the programs, I think some of you who may have followed the webinars that the city and county hosted as, you know, me as a moderator, it was really understanding that our people were impacted. How can we get that information to them? And because we can't come together to church because of all the restrictions, we have to find a way that will work. Social media. So we identified, being that I was in the county, I... I all this program, rental assistance, utility assistance, what is an eviction moratorium? How do you file unemployment if you've exhausted your unemployment and needing to do another extension? It's all of these things. And 
someone has to figure it out and simplify it or get the experts to come and speak to our people. So that was really, um, there were a lot of programs that were created by the state, uh, made available through CARES funding by state, city. So the challenge was, how do we get the information to our community? And that's why the Micronesian Ministers Group that Kathy, shout out to you, you are awesome. This is so chapter for your recommendation. And you know, uh, the, the Marshallese Task Force, you have to, in order to do a good and effective liaison, it was my first time, but when you have friends, when you have amazing community leaders and members, you work together. It is all about working as a team. And that's how we can get those information. It's not from me. It is from me to this group, from this group to all their churchgoers, their, uh, their own community members. So those were some of the programs and some of the efforts that we kind of, we were never trained to do all of this, but we are led by our hearts. We know what the needs are and we know who's there willing to help. So we just join efforts and try to help as much as we can. And being that voice is really, really important. So um, to all of you out there, uh, don't think that you're not ready. You know, if your heart is telling you to do it, and if you are, if you have the capability and the network to do it, take that step. Thank you. Uh, and again, guys, uh, that is we're talking to uh, Shanti uh, Sigra Asher here, uh, who's uh, all the way out in Honolulu. We're going to take a quick break from the, the podcast here and we'll be back with more. Hafri Mogesin Kasselerie Rananim. Lengwo, and welcome back to the One Micronesia podcast. Um, again, I'm here with uh, Shanti Sigra Azure, who wears so much hats and do so much for uh, the FAS or COFA citizens out in uh, Hawaii, mainly Honolulu. Uh, so, uh, Shanti, we're back here. Uh, thank you again for your time. Uh, in this part of the, the podcast, I want to talk to you about something that was just celebrated uh, just days ago, just this week. And I'm talking about International Women's Day. You talked about it right at, at the top of our podcast. But I wanted to, to hear more uh, of what you think about it and, and what, what it meant to you. Yeah, um, it truly is an important day for all women across the world. It doesn't matter where you're at, but celebrating Women's Day is definitely a memorable location and um, deserving. We will all agree it is very well deserved. There are so much we are still challenged with, yet so much progress and many achievements to celebrate. And that's why this day is really important. And definitely a big shout out to all the trailblazers who have paved the way for many of us to follow suit. What is equally important for me because it allows me a time to also reflect on accomplishments and thank other people and other women figures that have you know, stood by like my mom, my grandma, and all of my aunties who really fought through because their time was a lot different than our, our time, this generation. Um, so um, you know, it is also a time to see how I, as a woman, can improve. And that's one thing that I wanted to really highlight because while we did progress and we had a lot of achievements, it is also good to reflect on what we've done and maybe areas of improvement because we do it, you know, try to get better every day. You know, let's talk about uh, you, you are a, you're the president of the Kashrai Women's Association. Uh, let's talk about some of the obstacles that that you've seen. Uh, and you, you know, I know you talked about you know your your, your mom, your aunties, and, and and the many Micronesian women who paved the way uh, for, for 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 this generation of Micronesian women. What were what were some of the obstacles that you saw or you've heard? Um, in the past, and and I'm, I guess we we can either talk about those or talk about how we're moving forward. Yeah, I, I think, you know, um, growing up in Koshrai, um, it, it was always, when I was growing up, it was always men around the table making decisions and things have changed. I will attest to that. Um, as the president for the Koshrai Association here, 
one thing that happened was COVID. <laughs> we did plan on a lot to do to really highlight some of the achievements and also speak to our young girls. Um, these are the, the environments that are very challenging for them. Uh, so, you know, trying to share about our culture values and also guide them as they live in a different world are part of the, the uh, I would say, agenda items that we were going to tackle for last year's Women's uh, International Women's Day, but COVID happened. So we are going to still be optimistic about uh, the next year's International Women's Day and try to be um, more conscious of what we want to. It's definitely a lot to learn this year. And so those lessons learned will be incorporated in that. But, you know, um, one thing is that we have to acknowledge um, that while the movement, the movement is slow, you know, to be part of decision-making roles, there are already women that are in those places. Uh, we also have to always keep a balance between, you know, culture, religion, and ensuring that we are working stronger together with the fellow um, leadership. And I'm mo mo mostly referring to men who are leading our country. So it's really keeping that balance. That's amazing. And, you know, I think you talked about it. I think we're living in a day and age where, you know, we're not turning back anymore. We're moving forward and moving forward is, you know, uh, having um, voices in our government that are not of men, but of women. You know, uh, we want a Congress in the next couple of years to have women. And, you know, we want, you know, I think when you talked about being equality in, in um, the share of making decisions, I think we should have uh uh, we should implement more and, and get more women in the, into Congress. You know, you see an FSM Congress now. How about in the, the next two years? We, 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 we want women in there and to, to help with the decisions because, like I said, like, yeah, we were men, but, you know, sometimes we need to see, um, see a problem in a different perspective, you know? Amen. All right. So, uh, guys, again, I'm talking to uh, Shanti uh, Sigra Asher. She's out in Hawaii. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back to uh, close out the podcast here. Hot for day and welcome back to the One Micronesia podcast. Now, again, man, what a talk we've had. Such, such amazing. We covered a lot of things, uh, some amazing topics. Uh, but we're back here with uh, Shanti Sigra Asher, who's all the way out in Hawaii. Again, thank you so much for taking the time on your busy schedule with the time uh, differences and everything to sit down with me to talk about these awesome things. Uh, Shanti, I want to close out here. Um, you know, with a podcast here, we have so many viewers and, and most of them, and I know, are, are young Micronesian women and girls who are right now, they're, they're listening and they're hearing your story today. And they're feeling inspired um, to, to follow in your footsteps or to, to pursue in, in, in other um, greater goals, uh, whichever goals they set. Uh, so what would you tell them? What would you tell them uh, watching the podcast right now? Thank you. Um, I just want all of them to know that they are a lot smarter, a lot more resilient, and a lot ready than when I was, when I began my journey. And I'm saying all of this because you all are raised in a time that is a lot challenging, but you're still there pursuing school. And I know that you are far more capable than you think you are. And, you know, always remember that the doors are unlocked. You need to open them. If you don't open them, you will not know what's on the other side. So really be proud. First, be proud of where you come from. Being a Micronesian is a powerful thing. A Micronesian woman, a Micronesian girl. Represent your family and know that you are ready to take on whatever you want to take on. You can become any, you can become a doctor, an attorney, an engineer, whatever you set your mind to, and know that we're here. We have You have a lot of women who are ready to support you because 
we know that was needed when we started our journey. So we have a lot of empathy and we have a lot of confidence in you. So I've been following a lot of great achievements uh, recently by many kids. And uh, one thing that you have to remember is their technology addresses the many challenges that we faced when we were just starting off school. We were homesick, we can't see our parents, we have to be on a payphone to hear them, but now they're only a click away. So pursue your education and know that there are a lot of support out there for you. And uh, I just want to say for the last time, all the women out there, let's help each other, lift each other up so that we are setting a good example for the young girls that are watching. Uh, Shanti, thank you so much again for taking your time to, to be on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Kulo malalab and galangan. Thank you so you much. You all be safe and blessed. Bye. Uh all right, guys, that pretty much does it for another episode of the One Micronesia podcast. We'll catch you guys at the next one.